Hello, Hello and welcome to Steven Show's My Movies. The I'm podcast. doing the intro this time. Yeah, yeah, unusual. <laughs> the podcast title that just explains itself. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to explain it. You can figure it out. Yeah, so... You have a brain. The movie that I was shown today was Fever Pitch. Fever Pitch. It's about baseball. Because you went to a baseball game. I went to the baseball game a week before. Yeah. So you probably went, oh, Steve went to a baseball game. I gotta show him up. Yep. And it was entertaining i liked it a lot yeah me too it was i so jimmy fallon's like the main character Mm -hmm. his his character and i thought he was ted mosby from (laughs) how i met your mother because they look almost identical yeah it's surprising (laughs) so i remember during the movie i was like telling Stephen, like oh my god it's ted mosby and he was like nope Nope. (laughs) and i was like try again no you're wrong like that's ted mosby and he's like no it's it's really just not ted mosby and i was like (laughs) Then who? And he's like, Jimmy Fallon. And I was like, wait, is it Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel? Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. The good one. The good Jimmy. And I was like, what the heck? And I see it now, but it took me a while <laughs> to see it. I didn't really realize he acted, but I guess that's how he became a host. Yeah, he did a lot of SNL stuff. Uh, very few movies here uh, and there. Yeah, because I was like, I, I didn't know he was an actor. Anyway, so it stars Jimmy Fallon's character, which is Ben. Ben. And Drew Barrymore's in this movie, who is Lindsay. Lindsay, and basically, it's a love story between them, except Ben has another love, <laughs> and that is the Red Sox. Mm-hmm. So this movie is about baseball, mm-hmm. sort of. It's a, a love story in baseball. Basically, Lindsay is a workaholic working at this company. She works like a big tech company, yep. or she does stuff. Num- she runs the numbers. numbers, and she's kind of like been rejecting all the guys or like she hasn't found the one yeah and dating the wrong people yeah she's been dating duds i guess and one day um frick i keep wanting to say ted because that's ted Mosby. we can call him ted no we can't <laughs> Why not? this is an official review we have to, we have to be accurate <laughs> no ben. one's gonna watch this so it's fine <laughs> you're right our two viewers thank you for watching yes yes yes, yes. um ben I guess, like, there's a field trip, and he brings his students to a company. Yeah, like, a couple, for some reason. It was just, I like, a know. random, like, it was only, like, five students, too. It's very so it story-driven, like, in a sense. It's written for the story, so things happen. Yeah, so it was kind of unusual, if you think about it. But they meet, and he kind of, like, is like, wow, I like her. <laughs> You're <And> then, pretty. <laughs> and then he, like, comes back. Like, he drops the kids off and comes back to, like, ask her out. And she's mm. like, mm, Mm-mm. <laughs> like she rejects him and then the next scene is him like saying like i don't i don't know why she rejected me maybe it's because i'm a te- teacher is no, that a school teacher yeah which he's a school teacher and she like makes more than him and um, it'd be this whole thing oh, i make more money oh he's a school teacher you know what that means yeah very little income yeah and so then the next scene is like her and her friends and they're exercising and they're like, well, why'd you reject him? Like, why don't you, like, you should try dating different guys because she usually dates, like, really successful, I guess, asses. I don't know, like, <laughs> jerks. It Seems never so. works out. So they're like, well, you should try dating a, a different type of man. This guy seems promising. And she's like, they're like, what's the reason why? And small income. <laughs> and they kind of convince her to, like, test it out. So she agrees to the date. And she messages, uh... Ben, not Ted, Ben, and he gets a message in, like, the school office box because he doesn't have a phone, Yeah. and he's like, oh my gosh, and he's so excited, so then he shows up at her place for the date the next day or later that night, Yeah. and she's throwing up <laughs> majorly. She has food poisoning of some mm-hmm. kind, and that's kind of like their first d- date in a way where he basically <laughs> enters the house or the apartment that she's living in and helps her, yeah. like, he puts her to bed he becomes a nurse for a little bit yeah he takes care of her basically and i guess that then she's like okay i'll give this guy a chance and then they start seeing each other and it's going really well they really like each other he's Mm -hmm. she introduced him to his friend oh it should be stated that this is during the winter yeah so So there's no baseball no baseball season so it was it was not baseball season that's what i meant to say (laughs) um and she introduced him to her friends I guess he introduced her to his friends because it seems like we don't really get a scene of that, but it kind of is like implied. Yeah, it just kind of Basically, they start dating and they start doing dating things. And then 
at the party where he's like meeting all our friends the girls are up in their room and the girls are like so what's his like there has to be something you have to like <laughs> look into his room and explore and figure out what he's hiding because ever all he's too good to be true type of thing mm-hmm. and she's like what do you mean and one of the girls had a story about this like she, the man of her dreams and then she was making his bed and she goes into the closet and finds a bag of toenail clippings and hair <laughs> clippings like his entire life's just worth yep. of hair clippings and toenail clippings for some reason which was very re- weird and she's like yeah that was like you need to figure out what ben's bag of toenails is and then we cut to him waking up in his bedroom and it's just red socks stuff the bed sheets red socks the pillowcase red socks the phone red socks <laughs> the lamp red socks the walls are just covered in red socks and into the in the, log, and... the wall in the living room is the the green monster which yeah is pretty cool i will say just all red there's like red socks wallpaper red socks like his closet is basically just red socks his <laughs> bed bedspread sheets oh yeah shower curtain red yeah socks, shower curtain he had like a cup he had like Everything was Red Sox. Like, <laughs> Even insane... everything is a closet Red Sox. Yeah, an insane amount of Red Sox. And that's hit, That's Ben's bag of toenails. He's <laughs> an obsessive fan because he has season tickets where he gets tickets to all the games and he has like really up-close seats. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, that's he's a super fan. And we kind of get a scene of him like running out of his... Uh, apartment like in his underwear without shoes on in the middle of the winter <laughs> to pick up his uh box of like season, season tickets. passes tickets mm-hmm. and he was like he literally jumped up and like hugged <laughs> the mailman and like s- jumped straddled the mailman <laughs> i was like what the heck he's very an avid yeah. fan he was he's a probably the biggest fan he says he's never missed a game in like since he was 23 seven three years or whatever. yeah 23 years hasn't missed a game um so that's crazy to me mm-hmm. and so that's the bag of toenails. And then Lindsay kind of learns about it. And she's like, this is not, this is kind of concerning. But then <laughs> they kind of talk it out. And she's like, oh, well, this is good because you'll be really invested in the Red Sox. And then I can be working and not feel guilty. So I can get the promotion because I have to work really hard. Mm-hmm. And so they kind of like enter into this aware of what's happening a little bit. And then she kind of like becomes like a Red Sox fan. Like she she goes to games with him. Mm-hmm. She learns like the players. She like figures out like learns about Bambino's curse. Yeah, she figures out what baseball is. Yeah, she yeah she, yeah, she basically learns all the lore surrounding the Red Sox. And yep. Ben's like super into it, and he's super excited that she's like coming with him and learning about it. And mm-hmm. it's going well for he's now. He's happy that she likes what he loves. Yes. Or at least is interested in learning about it. Yeah. And then basically time goes on and it shows like a montage of them having really fun at the games. They're like drinking and Mm -hmm. eating hot dogs and cheering on the team. Cheering the team. Normal baseball stuff. Normal baseball stuff. Yeah. And and then you kind of see like the toll it's taking on Lindsay and she's not like getting her work done in time. She's staying up really late to do the work. Mm Mm-hmm. And she, like, falls asleep at her desk and in front of her boss, and it's really embarrassing. <laughs> and, like, it's kind of, like, taking over her life a little bit, and she's, like, talking to her friends, and she realizes, like, oh, no, I'm that person. I don't want to be that person that, like, loses their former self because they just have, because they got a boyfriend mm-hmm. kind of thing. And her friends are like, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. And she's like, okay. So then she goes to talk to him. She's like, yeah, probably not going to come to any more games because I have to do my work or no no no. they go to a game and she's like typing away on her laptop yep. while she's at the game and yes, yes, ben's yes, getting yes. annoyed because he's like how long am i gonna have to deal with this you not being invested i guess in, yeah. while the game you on your computer not yeah. paying attention and she's like well basically i have to do this because by the time like i leave work at six to come to the game and we leave, get home by like 11 and there's no time to do anything in between that mm-hmm and he's like, okay, I guess, like, he doesn't, he seems, like, sort of understanding, but I don't think he really understands. No, because the Red Sox are still number one priority. Yeah, and then that's when a foul ball hits her in the head, and it's really funny because, well, it's not funny, but it's <laughs> it's funny, because she, like, basically gets knocked out by this ball, and then the guy next to her, like, catches the ball, and then yeah. him and <laughs> Ben are screaming, like, oh, and they're yeah. so excited because oh, they ben got... Is a... trying to buy something, some, like, chur- churio chur... Oh, he's trying to buy a hot dog. Yeah, hot dog. Yeah. What? Why was I trying to say... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, he was trying to buy a hot dog, so he wasn't paying attention. 
So he just sees oh, the guy okay, with that's the better. ball. That's better. I didn't know that he didn't know that she... Oh, okay, that's good. I thought he just literally just no. didn't care that she got hit in the head and was just partying with this guy that the ball was caught. Okay, well, that's better now. Um, so, yeah, and then she's like, yeah, I can't come with you to the games anymore because I need to get my work done. And he's like, no, yep. you have to come. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> words, words, words. And then, wait, what happens after that? Well, that's when Ben realizes, you know what? Baseball isn't everything. Maybe I should be more invested in what she wants to do. Yeah, basically, I guess she expressed, like, frustration. Oh, no, no, no. It's like, okay, what happens is they go to, like, school and... Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, she, like, goes to the school and she's like, oh, my gosh, my work is going to fly me out to Paris. Let's go together. I can get my two two tickets on the plane for us. We can go fly out and have a weekend in Paris. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, oh, my God, I would love to do that. When, when? And she's like, oh, tomorrow. And he's like... <laughs> he looks at the schedule. He looks at the calendar. He's like, oh, this weekend's not a good weekend for me. <laughs> Super swamped. She's like, why? <laughs> he's like, well, I have to go to this game. I have to go to that game. And this, the Yankees are playing this and that. And they're two games away or something. Yeah. And so she's like, okay, like, I... I'm literally, we're literally gonna, <laughs> I can g- take you to Paris with me and you're still choosing the Red Sox over that. Mm-hmm. And then she walks out, um, kind of mad, I guess, and he follows her and then she, they're kind of fighting, but then she says, I'm late. And he's like, okay. And then she's like, no, I'm a late, like as in her period is late. Mm-hmm. So she's pregnant uh, the, uh, under the assumption that she's pregnant. And he kind of like, is like, oh. And she's like, yeah, I wanted to tell you in Paris, like, when we had alone time and we were, like, hanging out, and it would be special, but I just told you now, so it kind of ruined the whole thing. Yeah. So he's like, no, I'll go with you to Paris. And she's like, mm, no, you kind of ruined it. I'll just go by myself. <laughs> and so she leaves, and then he gets a call, like, later that night or a few nights into her vacation yeah. slash trip, and uh-huh. he, she's like, oh, my period. I got my period, so I'm not pregnant. And he's like, oh. And he seems pretty disappointed about it because he already bought, like, a onesie, a Mets onesie for, like, the little baby. Red Sox. Oh, my God. (laughs) Red Sox. Oh, I'm so fake. No. I should have said nothing. (laughs) Oh, no. I could have just put what you saying Red Sox before over that. I just might. Oh, okay. We'll see if that (laughs) makes it. That'll sound weird. Yeah. This might still be in it, though. (laughs) Yeah, so... (laughs) He buys a Red Sox jersey, like a onesie for the little baby, but then he puts it away because they're not going to have a baby. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, yeah, so he picks her up from the airport, and then they kind of have a talk where she's like, yeah, like, if since I was under the impression that I might be pregnant, I was thinking about life with a baby and, like, life with you. And she's like, I just don't think it would work because you're just so invested in the Red Sox and you you won't give up. Like, you won't compromise or, like, bend in any way because mm-hmm. of the game. Bend. Bend. Bend uh-huh. won't bend. Um, <laughs> and that wouldn't really be conducive for, like, a good family yeah. and, like, happiness. And he was like, what are you saying? Blah, blah, blah. And then they kind of break up, I guess. Quotations. And then I, I guess it's, like, the next scene is, like, he's coaching baseball at, like, high school. Yeah, or he's college, doing some school. therapy. And then he's kid. talking to this kid, and he's like, well, like, he's, like, basically giving him all his dirty laundry, like, this, like, she said this, and how, can you believe she wanted me to do, like, give up my tickets, mm. not go to a game for, like, little party, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but then the kid was like, listen, you love the Red Sox, but did the Red Sox ever love you back? And then he has this, like, huge epiphany, and then he's like, you know what? And so, basically, he gives up a Yankees versus Mets game to go to her, a party that her friend's throwing as her plus one. Yeah. Because she was saying, like, she mentioned earlier how she was disappointed that he wouldn't come. But she, like, understood his obsession. And so he's like, no, I'm going to go. And then cut to the scene where they're there and they're having a lot of fun. And, and Lindsay's so happy that he's, he's with her. And mm-hmm. they're just excited. And then they get home and he gets a call from his friend and he's like, oh my God, the Red Sox beat the Yankees. This is insane. Because <laughs> it was bottom of the ninth, yeah, 7-0 or something. It's an insane win, best game of my life. And then they got eight runs. And then that's when things go downhill. Mm-hmm. And Ben 
kind of takes it out his disappointment of not being at the game and he takes it out on Lindsay and he's like oh, I can't believe like I missed a game you did this it's your fault you made me not go and she's like I didn't make you not go you did that yourself <laughs> you even said it's just a game and then she it's goes it's not just a game and then she goes turn into Seinfeld there <laughs> yeah you broke my heart and then he just walked and then she I guess she kicks him out and then he goes home and he's depressed because mm. they broke up and there's a scene of him eating like chicken wings and watching old games yeah watching the old world series i believe where buckner the first baseman at the time of whenever that was the ball just goes right between his legs and that's how the mets win that world series oh my gosh <laughs> i don't know anything about baseball so that i didn't understand that but anyway <laughs> wait i forget what it was oh yeah so he he gets kicked out or he walks out and then it's kind of him at the baseball games without her, and he's all sad. And yeah, he starts talking about the Red Sox. You know, they they'll never let you down. They're always be there, April first or whatever. They're always be just there for you every time. Mm-hmm. Not like her. <laughs> and then <it> just <laughs> oh, and it's funny because his season, because season pass tickets are so coveted. And the people who go there are like kind of insane people who will literally <laughs> go to every single game of the season. Um, he knows all the people that are sitting around him and he's like close with them. Mm-hmm. So they're his second family. They're his summer family, as they say. Yeah. But anyway, and it was funny because one of the girls were like, yeah, we quit our job so we could follow the Met, uh, not yeah. Mets. We could follow the Red Sox. Stop with the Mets. I know. I don't know why I keep doing that. And if so. Anything, it should be Philly. <laughs> I know. And so. He kind of, like, has an epiphany. Again. That his obsession's a little bit too much because they're at a bar after the game and they're, like, just really mad about how the game went. But then they see three Red Sox players, like, at the same restaurant just eating happily and being happy. And they're like, yeah, we need to learn something. That's... Three games into seven of their little yeah. uh, American League and they're like, playoff. Yeah. They're like, yeah, this is... This is... Um, fall asleep. I'm like on the verge of falling asleep right now. <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, frick, what was I even talking about? You saw the Red Sox players, and they're all upset. The four guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> <gasps> and then Ben realizes, you know what? It's just a game. It doesn't have that much. I don't need to be there all the time, because there's more things to life than just baseball. Mm-hmm. And so he then goes to Lindsay's apartment, and he rings the doorbell, and you're falling asleep. <laughs> no, I'm not. Keep talking. <laughs> and he rings the doorbell, and who opens the door but the whoever guy who Lindsay's, like, working with to make sure that she gets the promotion. Mm-hmm. And then Ben's all like, what? what are, you, are you on a date? And Lindsay comes up, and she starts talking with him and Ben. And Ben's like, yeah, I love you. And she's like, okay, but, you know, I was really hurt by you mm-hmm. not wanting to do things with me, but you're focused on the Red Sox. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, okay. And then, yeah, she basically rejects him. Mm-hmm. And then somehow through the grapevine, she finds out that, oh, 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 she's at, like, a dinner with her friends, and she gets, like, her friend's husband like offered to once wanted to buy the red sox uh season pass tickets yeah and this was mentioned very early on in the movie as well yeah from ben and he's gonna buy them for like a hundred thousand dollars and Lindsay finds out that ben is trying to sell his tickets but before that her co-worker comes up and says you got the promotion right and then so she finds out that ben's trying to like sell the tickets so that I guess he can change his life and not be as obsessed with the Mets. And she's like, oh my god, he's... Red Sox! Sorry, the Red Sox. I can't edit that anymore. I know. <laughs> uh, it's staying in as is. And then... <laughs> and then she said, oh my god, he's selling the tickets for me. Like, I can't let him do that. He loves those tickets. So then she kind of, like, goes to her boss, gives, like, a... Starts to give a speech. And then she's like, oh my god, he gave those tickets up for me. I gotta go! And then she goes to the Mets game. No. And, no, the Philly. No. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> the Red Sox. The Red Sox. He goes to the Red Sox game and Ted. Ted. Fuck. 
<laughs> Ben's there. <laughs> Ben's there, and he's with her friend's husband, who's trying to buy the tickets, and he's trying to get him to sign the contract. And she's like, oh my god, I have to stop him. So she gets scammed by this guy who's selling, giving her tickets that are $300 a piece. Mm-hmm. And so she buys the tickets from him, and she runs into the, the place. They are like, Center you're not Park, here, yeah. you have to go to Center Park. So she has to run around again. And then she goes to her seat and, like, looks in the binoculars to yeah, see... Yeah, for some reason she goes to her own seat. Which makes no sense. She could just gone to... <laughs> I know. So she goes... She sees but Ben... she does that because, you know, yeah. things need to be written in so that things can happen. Yeah. So she sees Ben from across the way and she's like, oh my god, he's about to sign the papers. I have to stop him. So she tries calling her friend's husband, but he is like... He answers her. He's like, sorry, I'm out of game. Bye. And doesn't even, like, ask to see who he is. So she's like, oh, she's like, oh, shiz. And then she decides... To just jump onto the field and run across it. And it's really funny because there's, like, a chase sequence Mm -hmm. with, like, all, like, the security. And they're trying to get her. And she's just, like, avoiding them and knocking them out and, like, throwing her purse at them and juking them out. And she (laughs) then she gets chased by cops and she runs across the field. And she goes to to Ben. And she's like, Ben, please, don't, don't get rid of those tickets. You love those tickets. And it's funny because the police, like, catch her. And then they're like all right, you got to step aside. And she's like, no, wait, let me have this minute. And they're like, oh, okay. It's like, what the heck? That would never happen in real life. But anyway, her and Ben are talking like between the barricade. And she's like, you know, like you were going to give those tickets up for me, but like, I can't let you do that because those tickets mean the world to you. And the fact that you're willing to give them up for me, you love me so much. You're going to give them up for me. Well, I love you so much that I won't let you give them up. Uh And then she's like, let's do this let's like have a family and get married and then (laughs) ben's like oh my god yes and then they kiss and then she gets arrested and then it it ends up they're they end up being a good luck charm to the red Sox, and then they win the world series Mm -hmm. and then they have yeah that that's the end of the movie that's the end of the movie the red Sox win the world series and then they were talking about how Ben was going to name his daughter slash son after a player or something. Like yeah. That. And then it was the end of the movie, and that was it. It was a cute, like, little love story, and yeah, it was good. Now it's time for letterbox Reviews. <laughs> when... Time for reviews. Review time, review times, time for reviews. So, this received a 2.9 on Letterboxd, which is kind of bad. That's not great. Not great. But I can understand why. I can also understand why, and you will probably find out why by reading me reading these reviews. So the first review, he's an average guy who only likes sports, and she's a busy businesswoman who only likes business, And they, but they both have one thing in common. They're both clearly written by men. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one says, a film that taught young me that you can convince a girl to go out with you if you hide your obsessions well enough for the first few months. <laughs> Someone said, Jimmy Fallon and Die Hard Sports Friends, two of the most annoying and cringy types of people in this world. (laughs) That called you out. Okay, then. Someone said, there was a lot of turbulence on the plane when I was watching this. I really thought for a second I was going to die watching this shit movie, (laughs) LMA. Oh, my God. (sighs) Someone said, Drew Barrymore, I love you, but if a man ever talked to me about baseball like this, I'd beat the shit out of him. What's wrong with baseball talk? People don't like Ben, I guess. Someone said, this is my movie. I don't care how cheesy it is. I love this movie with all my heart. It's my go-to feel-good movie, and I sure needed it today. Me, crying over a romantic comedy centered around baseball starring Jimmy Fallon? Yes. <laughs> um, so, someone said, I've been a diehard Red Sox fan since I was inside the womb. That's how it is in Boston. At the time when I first was, began following the Sox, they were in the middle of the infamous curse, the curse of Bambino. For 86 years, the Red Sox has not won the world... Oh no, this is a very long review. Probably something that... And then they won, and that made me happy. And this movie is exactly how I feel. Okay. This one says... <laughs> this is the end. said, this movie for me is like a time capsule where I get to live the highlights of the season over and over again. See, there you go. How did you know that? Because I'm amazing. Um, <laughs> someone said, I'm a Sox fan. I am required by law to tolerate Jimmy Fallon's inability to act and shocking lack of chemistry with Drew Barrymore. <laughs> That's funny because I didn't think their chemistry was that bad, actually. No. I It was believable to me. I've seen a lot worse um, uh, romantic ten, uh, chemistry. 
and exhibit a was that recent hallmark movie with lindsay lohan and that guy that like hotel owner they had no romantic chemistry at all and that was a really bad movie Maybe we'll do a review on it. Hey, oh, maybe dear. I'll show Steve in a movie. Oh, no. What? To a special episode. <laughs> we'll see. We'll revisit that. Okay. Check out this holiday maybe. season. <laughs> maybe during the holiday season. That could be fun. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Someone, this one says, a nice, harmless, mid 2000s romantic comedy. I miss these types of movies. That's probably the best way to sum it up. Yep. Um, someone said, baseball is romantic as fuck. Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon are not. <laughs> Someone said, not quite the coked-out and dead-eyed Jimmy Fallon of The Tonight Show, but the stoned and vacant Jimmy Fallon of the mid-aughts is just as void as charisma. I don't really know what they're trying to say. I guess Jimmy Fallon wasn't a good actor, in their opinion. Well, Jimmy Fallon hasn't really ever been a good actor. Okay, okay, okay. His SNL stuff, he breaks all the time. (laughs) Really? I've never actually watched any of his stuff, because I've actually not really watched SNL. I only really watched SNL when they were, like, making jokes about Trump. (laughs) It was pretty funny. (laughs) Anyway, this review says, Undeniably cute and energetic, this romantic comedy about the double-edged sword of being part of a fandom feels rather unique. It shows the toxicity, but also the immense passion that comes with being a diehard fan of something. I thought Jimmy Fallon was going to be insufferable, but he wasn't actually half bad in this role. And I found it so cool that they filmed this during the year that the curse of the Bambino was lifted. Such an interesting part of film and baseball history. Mm Mm-hmm. Jimmy Fallon says he loves hentai in this, and that is actually true. He did say that. He did? <laughs> when the movie, Remember when he was helping her when she was sick? He brought, like, movies over, and he's like, yeah, half of these are animated porn from Jap- Japan, and this one's, I like this guilty pleasure movie. Oh, I was he, making hot dogs at that point. Ah, uh, that's why. Mm-hmm. Um, I was hungry. Someone said, anyone who would pick baseball over Drew Barrymore is simply wrong. But baseball, though. Mm, I do not relate to that because I'm not really a baseball fan. Clearly, I literally butchered, like, Mets, Red Sox, and Phillies at the, <laughs> all on the same night. Someone said, I could quite literally kill myself for this. It well, was a positive review. Don't do that because then you won't be able to watch it. Someone said, the death of the rom-com can be directly attributed to the fact that Drew Barrymore stopped producing rom-coms. I don't she watch enough. She has been in a lot of them, actually. I don't really watch enough rom-coms to know. I don't really watch movies that much, clearly, hence the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole reason to yeah. make you watch movies. This is where we said, so basically we shouldn't date men that are obsessed with sports. Not exactly. Don't date men who are excessively obsessive about anything. True. Especially murders. Obsession isn't good, generally. Unless it's about Lego or baseball. Uh, moving on. <laughs> um... <laughs> Fever Pitch is a boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy wins girl back romantic comedy. This was such a great movie. It would have been better if it were the St. Louis Cardinals. The, it doesn't matter what team it is. Yeah, you could probably like paste any team. Yeah. Replace the line with whatever team and it would still be the same movie. Yeah. Someone said, it's true that being a baseball fan is sexy. Mm. Someone <laughs> you just went, mm. One review just said one star. No, period. <laughs> what? That's so sad. I I was very entertaining. It there's like it's like a little problematic because it's like two thousands. Like the characters are kind of one dimensional in the way that like like one review said the Ben loves baseball. That's the only thing he loves, and then yeah, that's Drew his Barrymore personality. Is literally just a businesswoman. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So they're kind of like flat characters, but it's fun. It's a fun. It, it's like I think it's flat because. You can insert yourself into the character mm-hmm. and kind of like live vicariously in a way. Like it's like an insert for your, the viewer. Yeah. So it makes it better. Someone said mediocre. Better than being a Mets fan. <laughs> Mets are sucking recently. <laughs> and as we said earlier, we both went to baseball games before watching this movie. The baseball game I went to was the Mets versus the Braves and the Mets lost 23 <laughs> to three. <laughs> so bad. And the literally... There was like a grand slam by the Braves. That's so sad. <laughs> That's actually so sad. <laughs> but anyway. Well, the Phillies did really well, the ones I went to. Trey Turner, if you understand what I'm talking about, he finally got a hit. And this time it was a home run. And now he's doing a lot better. Someone said, Drew elevates. Fallon kind of socks here, but he gets through it. Solid single. That was a lot of baseball puns right there. That was too much. Slow your roll. Don't date that person. <laughs> Wait, is Elevates a baseball thing? 
elevates no that's just a word oh okay okay <laughs> i was like i wonder how many puns okay yeah okay fair fair fair, fair. you could have said like strikes out you know something like that true good idea maybe you should have written a review i'd rather not so i was a like, jimmy fallon is hot that's that's it oh my god someone said 103 minutes of red Sox propaganda <laughs> <laughs> that's funny isn't that like every movie though? Not specifically for the Red Sox, but just here's a thing. You like thing? Good thing Jimmy stuck to being a talk show host. LMAO. Yeah. And I that agree. is that's all for these reviews. And now we'll move on to Steven's segment. Fun facts. Fun facts. It's fun facts time, and I have one fun fact because I'm tired and we should go to bed. The fun fact is that the Red Sox did in fact win the World Series that year, and Drew Barrymore and Jimmy Fallon were at that game, and them being on the field is actually them being on the field at them, the Red Sox winning the World Series. So that's pretty cool. And that was put into the movie. That is cool. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of, um, like, cutscenes of actual footage. Cutscenes. It's not a game. <laughs> There's actually a lot of scenes <laughs> <laughs> of uh, real life footage of them. Red Sox. Yes. Nice. You, got, you stopped yourself. Yes. And on that note, thank you for listening to this episode. Yes. Of Stephen Show's My Movies. We'll never record this late ever again. Yeah. Um, We're loopy. And it can show. Yeah. It shows. We'll see. Maybe this will get us some viewers. Back. It probably won't. No. We'll but the two people who are watching, thank you very much. Thank you for being avid watchers. Even if it's just like four minutes, but that's fine. Yeah. That's okay. An amount of time is more than enough. Yes, exactly. So... Thank you, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Just for reference, maybe this can be put in the end footnotes or something. I built a PC today, and it really worked my mind, and that's why I'm really tired, because we also watched the movie late as hell. And now we're recording this at 12 midnight. So that's why I'm tired. Excuse my tiredness. <laughs>